Hey guys, it's Andrew Escavel here back with another review and today I'm going to be reviewing an interesting piece of security software that I don't think many people even know exists. It's called Threatfire, as you can tell from the nice little area over here with the logo and whatnot. But the neat thing about Threatfire is it protects you in a way that no other software seems to do. You see, Threatfire is a software designed to help defend against what's known as a zero-day attack. And what that is, is quite simply, your antivirus is only good if it has a definition of a virus in which to look for. But what about those viruses and other forms of malware that are out there that the antivirus companies don't know exists? How do you defend against something like that? Those types of attacks and malicious software are known as zero-day attacks because they're not known to have existed yet. So antivirus isn't going to help you with that, but Threatfire might be able to do that for you. You see, it analyzes the way softwares work on your computer and tries to detect whether it could be malicious or not based on the way it acts on your computer, which is really, really cool because it's really the only way you can detect a zero-day attack. If you don't know it exists, this software might be able to figure it out. So let's go over some bits of the software now. This is the security status. This is your home page. And this right up here is just a little uh, thing telling you that the protection is on. Now, worldwide detection. It says Threatfire users are protected against these prevalent threats and more. Click on the threat name for more details. Now, obviously, we can click on it, and it'll probably take us to a web page and whatnot. But um, essentially, uh, you click on it, and it kind of tells you where these are predominant. And if you look here, there's a little red dot. Now, if we go over to Adware, you'll see that uh, when you click on it, and I'm sorry, you know, it doesn't take you to a web page. What it does is when you click on it, it shows you this map of where these particular issues have been most predominant across the world. And you can kind of gather, if you're in these areas, that maybe you might have these issues. And the software can help protect you against it. Now with malware, it's a little more specific, apparently. So, anyway. The little area right here, click on it, shows you where they're predominant and it tells you that it can probably help you protect protect yourself against that. Now, protection statistics. This tells you how many things it's analyzed, how many suspicious activities were detected, and how many were blocked. Now, as you can see, I've had a lot of things scanned, and a lot of things tried to tell me, or a, a lot of times where the software tried to tell me, whether trying try to ask me, you know, hey, do you think it's bad? Because I think it's bad. And a lot of times, no, it's it's not bad. And that, that could be an issue for some people who don't have a lot of background knowledge on th uh, digital threats to your computer and whatnot with malware and, and, it, with, and viruses and stuff like that. Because it, it can be a little scary if you're just a normal average Joe and something pops up and it's and from a software like this and you think, oh, it must be bad, you'll block it. And 99% of the time it's not bad because this doesn't really go off of virus definitions. It, like I said, it kind of goes off of how your software reacts with things. So it analyzes you know, how what it's doing and tries to compare, hey, is that something a bad software would do kind of thing? So if you're not very skilled in this particular field, threat fire can be a nuisance. But if you're like me and have been trained to uh, know all, all sorts of different things in, in network security, then it could be a really, really good asset. And as you can see, if you want to make it more specific, you can you know switch it up by 90 days, 30 days, 7 and today. And... Um, you can do scans for it as well. It's not just real time. Um, and I'll go over that in a second. And the next part is system status. Uh, this just tells you your product version, if your version is current. You know, the last scan I haven't scanned in a while. So we're going to do that as part of the little review here. Now, if we go over to news, this is interesting. 
because this gives you um, some interesting news clips about uh, things that have gone on in the network security world involving threat fire and you can tell the uh, the dates on these things are a little old but nevertheless they're they're an interesting read and we go over to the did you know and this just kind of goes over some basic stuff and this is the free version of threat fire by the way so it's not like you know the super cool paid for version but it's still a really good tool over here is where we do a uh, your scans and you can do a rootkit scan or PC tools antivirus scan which is a different this different software offered by PC tools um, the Intelli scan is just a quick scan of uh, uh, critical files and stuff and a full scan obviously is of the full stuff um, I like to do full scan because you know I'm just thorough like that and it scans just like any other software and uh, obviously it's gonna take some time and you know just run it every once in a while and if it scans something weird it'll let you know and you can determine later by reviewing it you know is it something that you want to block or is it something that you want to keep running so there's two phases and anyone who knows anything about uh, you know network security knows that root kits are a pain in the butt especially if you got a polymorphic root kit <laughs> good luck with that um, anyway, uh, threat control. This is this allows you to kind of see what you've done in the past with different things. Now, this section right here is for allowed. These are all the things that it's detecting, like, hey, this is kind of weird. What do you want to do with it, man? And I'm like, you know what? Just keep this running because I, I know what it is. Like, for instance, this one down here, Flash Player Installer. I update Flash. A vast software. Yep, that's my antivirus. You know, things like that. And then there's denied. I haven't found anything that needed to be denied yet which is good for me because if I had to deny anything I'd be a little concerned about what's on my computer but uh, quarantine I haven't needed to quarantine anything yet but you know once again your situ your situation is going to be different than mine and then protection log this is just kind of a log of everything that you've done going into advanced tools now you can create custom rules and whatnot but I generally don't mess with this because I don't need to so if you want to mess with that you know that's up to you but for my purposes they seem to be fine the way they are now system activity monitor this is kind of a neat section uh, you can see all the stuff on your computer that's running and you can see some pretty detailed information about every single process and uh, process tree of said process in this case it'd be fraps which is what I'm using to record and uh, you know all this other good stuff Skype and all my other cool little softwares that I got running all the time and we can go as for, far as to go with other because it categorizes auto run system services protected yada yada pretty cool um, going over into the settings now this is where uh, some of the magic happens things that you need to configure um, obviously you can turn the protection on and off and register threat fire in Windows Security Center and uh, let's see we recommend leaving the following unchecked for better compatibility with other third-party security software see um, so I'm I'm using a Komodo firewall so Windows Security Center it's not it's not standard Windows firewall and I'm assuming that leaving this unchecked based on what it says down here is probably a good thing because Komodo is a third-party firewall um, sensitivity level this is where I believe your heuristic settings are you know kind of like scan something eh, this looks okay or you can be like yeah it looks okay but I'm really suspicious you know the kind of thing where you set you know the sensitivity of everything and I just keep it on three because you put it too high then it bugs the crap out of you and becomes a nuisance and you're less likely to pay attention to it set it too low and it's not going to detect jack so three is a pretty good setting However, if you're in a high security environment, obviously the settings would need to be higher. Uh, default actions, and this is what happens when it scans something. If you use Komodo Firewall, you're going to be familiar with the way this works because when it finds something in real time, it will pop up and ask you, what do you want to do? Do you want to allow this process, quarantine it, stop this process, and do you want to remember the answer? 
and that's that's what it that's what it does and you can select it for every time and right here I've got the default to prompt me or I can just have a default as allow or quarantine and this is for potentially unloaded program or pups and obviously again prompt me allow or quarantine now I just do prompt me because a lot of times it's something that you need to run even though it says it some, could be something weird but once again that's why I've got it set to three because otherwise the thing would be going off like crazy so um, moving on checking for updates I can have it you know do updates and all that automatically which I probably should set it to that so that it does it automatically because sometimes I forget I don't often run this program I want to do its real-time thing most of the times but every once in a while I do I do do a full scan um, just some more community protection stuff uh, program language obviously there's other languages it's not just English notices uh, this uh, show security status reported for 14 days it'll uh, give you some information basically about what it's scanned and what it's found and what you've done just a little uh, thing to remind you of, of what you've uh, what the computer or what this software on your computer has kind of found over over the course of its time being installed uh, show threat fire bulletin when with breaking news okay so basically this is like gonna show you when something critical happens like if we all remember a number of years ago when Configure first came out uh, it was a pretty pretty well-known got on the media and it caused a lot of issues and that's the kind of thing it'll report on right here because that's breaking news in the networking security industry because you know, got to be able to protect yourself against that, you know. Oh, by the way, remember, April 1st is the most popular date to release a major virus. Because when you release it on April 1st and people know about it and talk about it, they can't tell if you're being serious or just trying to joke with them. So that's why April 1st, April Fool's Day, is chosen to be the number one date in which terrible, terrible malicious softwares are put on the internet for people to have accidentally downloaded so always be careful about that uh, in the quarantine um, we've got system restore points set to you know go for in case we need to roll back and for scan we can we can schedule automatic scans but because of the way my computer is I'd rather do it manually but if you're one of those people who wants to have it done for them, this is the way to do it. And obviously, upgrade now. This will bring you probably to their website. And yes, I am using Komodo Ice Dragon. If you haven't used Komodo Ice Dragon or Komodo Dragon, seriously, try it out. I think you'll like it. Look it up. It's pretty cool. That's another piece of software you can use to keep your computer more secure when surfing the interwebs. Anyway, this is where you can download uh, some more advanced stuff from PC Tools. And PC Tools is pretty decent. Um, I've used their stuff before. But uh, once again, not entirely necessary to upgrade. Anyway, uh, that's that's kind of the, uh, the basic overview of uh, ThreatFire. And uh, one last thing I want to do is really quick is the smart update. And it kind of just scans your software for any updates do it really simple it's just one click done so anyway um thanks for watching guys uh if and i like i said highly recommend this software if you're more advanced in the uh, networking security department and computer security because it can be a very valuable tool and yes it works in conjunction with your firewall and your antivirus whatever it may be whichever ones you choose to use it when you install it you'll see that it 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 kind of detects all that and just tries to work with it instead of standing alone. It genuinely integrates with all your other security suits, which is really, really cool. But um, other than that, just got to try it out. It's really, really cool. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please comment, rate, subscribe, show your friends, check out my other videos. Got plenty of them. And as always, thanks for watching.